uh, I'm going to pass it off to Jet. All right. But dark side. Guys, closing with a bang. Dark side. Dark side. Are we talking about the dark side of the force? Uh, or the dark side of the moon. <laughs> uh, well, you got to listen to find out. All right. Wow. So, um, you know, when you think of classic albums, like like all of our albums we've talked about tonight, I mean, Dark Side of the Moon is like right up at the top of the list. I feel like that comes like to mind for, for a lot of people. Um, this album was freaking huge when it came out. Um, you know, it instantly became like a, uh, you know, a, a totem for stoner, stoner culture and, um the, the album cover, the black prism with the light shining through is like iconic and is on every whatever paraphernalia. But I think that this album like really, you know, for what it, for, for as much hype that it gets, I think it really does hold up to a lot of that hype just because it's so um, just cohesive in its concept. Um, I would say like lyrically and musically, um, the production value is just like off the charts in, in these songs, like all are all so just structured like differently in the avant-garde. And I read somewhere too, that this album had a huge influence from Kind of Blue. So um, boom, ties in there. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, so this album, is, it, it talks a lot about um, like death and then the idea of like, how do you live your life knowing that this like giant unknown thing is like right around the corner. Um, and like, the, it talks a lot about like mental health and um, our place in the world and like what, what you do with your life um and it's such a like an ethereal album it's so spacey i feel like if i was going to fly through space i would i would turn this album on um i love the um uh, I, I love the guitar on this album david gilmore is great this is one of the early david gilmore albums um but like time and money are awesome guitar solos and i really felt the second half of the album just that run of um of any color you like or us and them to any color you like it's just tickled all the pleasure points in my brain on this latest listen. So I've listened to this album so many times. So, and I always find something new with it. So, um, cool. Yeah. I'll stop talking and, uh, excited to hear what you guys have to say. Um, I, I'll go first. Cause I, I feel like I, I've, I've listened to it probably the least. I mean, I'm, I'm, I love Pink Floyd, but like, I think growing up, they were just, it was like a classic situation where it's like, it's very dense. Um, and I don't think I, I just never got around to listening to it too much. I mean, I've listened to all their classic albums, of course. Um, but yeah, it was good to listen to this um, a couple of times just to get to really know the album. And it's, it's funny. It's like the, the most popular Prague album of all time. Definitely. Right. I mean, there's some other ones, but this one, it, it's, you can tell why that is. It's pretty accessible for a Prague album. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an, it's a it's easy to listen to, but it's still spacey and grand and has those themes. Um, it's not like a Yes album where it's like, you know, really, um, yeah, like weird time signatures all the time and weird like crazy stuff all the time. Like it's spacey and it's it's just and it's just an amazing like the solos are great. Um, Lauren and I were listening to the other day and like we were talking about the keyboard playing and like the synthesizers. No, no I mean, one talks about the keyboard player, but like. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'm saying. I don't know if no one does, but like everyone talks about Gilmore, everyone talks about Waters, but like that keyboard adds so much of the ambiance and flavor, you know, that that's going on. That just sort of makes like it adds a lot of that ethereal aspect. That you know, I don't know. I like. I I'm not. I'm not going to like put any one of them on a pedestal necessarily because you know I think cohesively like that was such a great lineup um you know it's i mean it's it pretty much is the lineup it, it's you, you'd be hard pressed to really say that like i mean sid barrett started the band you know like he, he was there for the start of it but what was he there for like two albums like you know so this album kind of deals with sid barrett leaving um yeah yeah well, same with you know issues yeah, they, they, he's he's mentioned a lot i mean like you know shine on you crazy diamonds different album you know sorry to like you know that, that's that's also Sid bear you know that i think they i think they were you know i think that really dealt a blow to them existentially you know to have someone that close just end up off the fucking deep end you know so i think a lot of their later albums ended up being very reflective you know and existential um wow. yeah no th this for me like you know, as, as Miles Davis is to jazz for me being, you know, sort of that entry level, like, hey, this is accessible and cool. Like, I could see myself listening to it. 
Uh, Pink Floyd was really what got me into like prog rock. Um, that that was the album and the artist that sort of piqued my interest in all that. So it, you know, it definitely holds a special place for me. I've been listening to, I don't know, Pink Floyd for years now. Um, and at that one, like, I, I'll sort of alternate which one I like favor more in a given listen. But Dark Side definitely stands for me as just sort of like, you know, the, the classic Floyd, like the, you know, what, what you think of when you think of like, you know, what they were capable of, you know, compositionally and, you know, just that they has such a, uh, I don't know, it, it like it, it, you know, they had that joke I made about how you'd want to bring this to like a best buy if you're testing speakers. It's because there really isn't a tone that's out of place. It's just, no. you know, perfect tone after perfect tone, perfectly chosen notes, perfectly chosen lyrics, and then mixed perfectly and until you have this like pristine sort of crystal of music. Um, well, Matt, you know, Matt was it, talking it, about the solos and how like there's not a solo on this album that I dislike. Each one of them fits the song that it's in so quintessentially perfect like us and them that saxophone solo that just like kind of floats over the top as they're talking about like you know life and death and then you've got you know money with its like absolutely rocking solos and fun fact about money i once heard this anecdote about uh how like the, the band members were sitting there with like a ruler you know measuring out like where each sound effect at the beginning goes like trying to like and, and stacking it all up on like eight inch tape because like that's then like cutting it you know like physically with scissors but like it's it's such a for me this album is quintessential like this is one of those albums like I, before this before this month i hadn't heard this album in a long long time but coming back to it felt like returning you know, like returning home with an old friend right like just like you come back to it and you're like oh right this track and then this track and then this track like there's there's nothing in this album that i could point a finger at and say no that should have been different um and the and, album and the album flows sorry to cut you off but the album also flows exact like perfectly like, yeah, well, the, perfect. like the only switch is between whatever the track is and then money and, and that's only because like you had to flip the record <laughs> right yeah 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 exactly Sorry. Yeah, like it's like it's 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 quite just a, it's so well crafted, and like it's it's hard to understate like it's it's influence on pop culture too, right? Like, like as you as you mentioned at the beginning, Matt, like the the prism with the rainbow is referenced everywhere. You've got like every kind of reference that you could absolutely possibly have. Like going up to the great gig in the sky, like I'm sure that was a colloquial phrase, but like it's it's cemented in pop culture now, and you could like you could probably. Quote any song title of me, I can I can give you a riff, um, but it's not to mention like how sort of apocryphal or um, no, I was word. Uh, anyway, how how like quintessentially that album has like stood for psychedelic use has stood for like musical innovation has stood for like all all these different aspects of culture that people all point to and claim like dark side of the moon and then you've got like some of the hardest hitting lyrics on a pink floyd album on there of like you know <laughs> every every year is getting shorter never seem to find the time <laughs> you were you were long you were you were young but now you're older like i, I forget how the exact lyrics go but like it's if you listen to it yeah, that, that song is a freaking sledgehammer, dude. Yeah. Um, and, and what a testament. What a testament to ability to be able to write a song like that that like will like bring people to tears, you know? I, I, I love this album so much. Thank, thanks for making thanks for making this pick. Yeah, always always good to listen. Yeah, I mean I mean people do, a lot of people will like say that, that like they love Dark Side, but it's like not quite their favorite Floyd album. I think it's only because it's like just a little bit more accessible. There's, there's no like, like 15 minute song on it, you know. Um, <laughs> but like, but the the songs all like just blend. Oh, you're out. not a fan of Uma Guma? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, is it, it? It just is. It's, it's an album, you know. At the same time, like you can you can't listen to like one song really kind. I mean, you can, but like it's not. It, 
it's meant to be listened together. It truly one, is one of those concept albums. So, have you guys ever done the uh, the sync up between um, Dark Side of the Moon and The Wizard of Oz? Oh yeah, plenty of times. Plenty of time. <laughs> plenty of time. <laughs> is it worth it? Oh, it's so it's great. Um, well, I, I love I, Wizard of Oz and I love Dark Side, so we got to do it sometime. I I don't know if it's. I don't know if it was what was consumed or or the lineup of the audio or a mix of both, but there are some parts that are staggeringly well timed out and some parts where I probably was just making it up in my head. <laughs> Either way, yeah. very cool, very cool mix. Uh, you know. Like like the, the moment that like the tornado hits is when like there's all that crazy noise going around. Um, in what song is it? Uh, time, I think. Oh, time. Well, the album's only like 45 minutes long, 48 minutes long. You know, it's, it's how long is Wizard of Oz? Well, <laughs> it's not a soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, you, you well, gotta, you what happens when it ends? Do you just, do you just, I mean, do you like, no, play like that's it? I think it only go, it only matches for like the first hour of the movie or, or like the first hour long. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but then you flip it over and you're kind of, you know, you're kind of there already. Yeah, for this album is the uh, the weed is fucking awesome, bro. Album. Of <laughs> album. <laughs> I, if if this album were a meme, it'd be the predator handshake of between <laughs> like middle aged dads and stoners. Yeah. <laughs>